Hey everybody and welcome to another live edition of The Sewing Report. I'm Jennifer Moore helping you discover your love of sewing and we're doing this show live right now from the metro Atlanta area. So welcome and yes as advertised this week we're talking all about some of the new sewing machines I've been seeing around. Stay with me because that's what we're going to be talking about this hour. It is Sunday August 27th and I don't know about you guys but I am pretty excited about tonight's season finale of Game of Thrones. If there's any Thrones fans out there, let me know. I'm going to pop up the chat window shortly so that we can all see what everybody's talking about. But welcome if you are joining us for the first time. Awesome if you are a repeat viewer. Also awesome. And if you're watching the replay, great. You're, you're coming back. You don't have to watch this live if your time or schedule does not permit that. That's the good thing about this show is that you can watch it whenever you want. So... I'm here and I'm just hanging out and I apologize in advance. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today, but that's not going to stop me from bringing you this live edition of the sewing report because not much can stop me unless I get like, you know, like hit by a bus or something, but hopefully that doesn't happen. So we are going to be chatting about sewing machines. Now let me get up the chat window and if you're watching, let me know where you're watching from and uh, oh, sorry, there's some sort of fly in here. But I'm really excited to be with you guys today. All right, we got a couple comments already. We've got Vic. Is it ja Jazz? I'm not sure if I'm doing that totally wrong. Let me know from Mississippi, Canada, Delaware. And thank you, Vic. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm coming down with something and it feels kind of gnarly. So yesterday I was a little bit like totally out of it. But um, yeah, I didn't get, I... In full disclosure, I have not done any sewing this weekend just because I was like, well, so I don't know what I'm going to do today. I did get a little bit of editing done. And if you're, if you are a, ga a fellow Game of Thrones fan, let me know um, what, okay, let's, let's have a couple questions here. And if you're not a Thrones fan, I apologize, but I'm just so excited about this show that I can't help myself. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, what do you think is going to happen in tonight's episode? What do you, you know, especially after last week, which um, I, I was following some comments on Twitter and people were talking about the dragon and I, I never thought I could bring myself to feel so emotionally invested in a fake computer aided dragon, but I am. I love those dragons. They're the best part of the show. I just love all like their motions. I know dragons aren't real, but I wish they were. And I just love what they're doing with the dragons. I love seeing them fly and I've loved seeing them, you know, grow from little baby dragons to being like the size of a jet plane. I think the dragons are like by far the coolest thing on the show for me, for me personally. Um, we got, wow, Denver, Oakland. Okay, JB is going to a Game of Thrones viewing party. Now I have to ask, what, I wonder what kind of snacks they're going to have. Are they going to have like some themed snacks? You know, maybe some like dread. You know what? May I really do want to do some some Game of Thrones like crafty stuff. Maybe I will try that. And if you haven't checked out the video from earlier this week, I did make I did reveal my Game of Thrones sewing project, uh, my Dracaris pillows. So I'm linking the video below if you'd like to watch it. Feel free. It's not really a tutorial. It's just more of like a video showing how I made it. But it was a lot of fun and it was a really quick and easy project. And I'm really loving what you can do with all the applique stuff, especially with Heat and Bond. You can really take about anything you want and make an applique out of it. And, but yeah. So anyways, let's let's get into it. But yes, Game of Thrones, let me know what do you think, what do you think is going to happen in the season finale? I, I am really looking forward to it. And I can't, I feel very sad that the next season is going to be like a year away. That really kind of bums me out. But what are you going to do? But anyways, we are going to be chatting this hour. So over the past few weeks, I've been seeing a lot of uh, ads for new, like I know it's that time of the year, you know, it's like new car season. I guess it's new sewing machine season. So I've been seeing so many ads and so many, um, just like announcements about new products coming out. So I thought we would talk about, I thought we would talk about some of the, some of the machines I've seen, um, the impressions I have of them. Now, obviously, um, we all know you can't buy every single sewing machine that exists. And sometimes I kind of wonder, like, if you just got a new machine last year, what makes these sewing machine makers think you're going to buy a new one the next year? Like, I've had my sewing machine for over two years and... 
I really don't have an intention of getting like another one for a while. Um, just because I still have, I still am suffering from sticker shock from the first purchase. I have been trying to add some different types of sewing machines. Like again, I've been playing around with that cover stitch machine. I have a serger. I also have a sailrite machine that embarrassingly I never use. So that there's that. And then, um, the Everstone company, they, a few, a while, about a year ago, they actually lent me the Everstone Sparrow 25 to test out and make videos with. And I was actually very pleasantly surprised and impressed by how much that she machine can do and the quality of the machine for the price. So that's actually one of the first, that's actually one of the first machines that, uh, first lines I wanted to talk about. So let me pop this up. And yes, hello. I can't believe how many states we got. California, Montana. Montana's pretty awesome. Okay, Judy says drink some, have some vitamin C. I think that's a good idea. Louisiana. And to uh, to vet in Louisiana, I hope everything's okay. I know there's a lot going on weather-wise. And if you are in Texas, my heart goes out to you and your family because I know Texas is dealing with a lot right now. And there's a lot of, uh, there's just a lot of turmoil in that area from from Hurricane now Tropical Storm Harvey. So if you are in that area, I hope you're staying safe and I really uh, will be praying for you and your family, families because I know that there's people there suffering and I feel very lucky to be here. So anyways, that's my uh, my random, random sidebar of the day. <laughs> that and the Game of Thrones thing. All right, so we got Vic. I've had my sewing machine since my birthday in January and I was looking forward to getting a more advanced machine with more options. I own a Janome My Style 100 and it's very basic. And you know, that's a good thing. I do think we should touch on that later in the show. Like, and actually I think next week I do want to talk about more about prices. So this week let's talk about new, the new machines I've seen. And I think next week I really want to talk about the mindset be behind how much you should spend on a sewing machine because I think it's a very interesting thing to discuss. And, you know, there's the prices of sewing machines are just so all over the place. It's especially if you're just getting into sewing, it's really hard to to tell what you need and also how much you should spend. There are machines that are hundred dollars and then there's machines that are twelve thousand dollars. Like, are they really that much different? And also, you know, how much you sh how much you should you really spend in a sewing machine? So I think next week, I think that's what the topic is going to topic is going to be. But uh, let me bring up the first let me bring up the first machine and I'll keep reading comments. Okay, so the first one I do want to talk about is the uh, Eversone. So Eversone, I have the, obviously I've got the, uh, I've got the uh, 25. So Eversone is, sorry, I'm going to move over. Eversone is coming out with the 30. So, and by the way, some of my pictures, they're going to be an interesting orientation. So I apologize in advance. Let me just try to move the camera a little bit this way. Here we go. Um, so Eversone is coming out with the Sparrow 30 and I've linked, so in the description box, I've linked, um, websites where you can go to learn more information about any of these sewing machines that we're talking about, because I'm obviously not an expert. I don't work at a sewing machine store. I've never sold them before and I don't work for these companies. I just keep seeing these all over the place. So I thought it would be worth kind of just Kind of just discussing. So this is the Eversone 30 and I've linked that below. You can actually get it on Amazon right now. And that's one thing I really like about the Eversone line is just how readily available they are. You don't have to go to a dealership if you don't want to. You can just buy it online. It comes to your house. And I also really like the, uh, I, I really like the affordability of this line. If you're not familiar, Eversone is actually made by Bernina because I actually met them at QuiltCon. Um, and the, like, I think it's the fifth, I want to say the fifth generation, Philip Ulchi, he was in charge of the Eversone line. So we talked a lot about that and that's how he ended up sending me one to try out. I have been very impressed by the 25. And if you have the 25 or if you've tried it, the 30 is even better. So the Eversone Sparrow 30, okay, let's... Talk about the first thing that you notice, and that's the color. The color is blush pink, which I think is such a genius move for the sewing machine community because sometimes the sewing machines that are coming out, in my opinion, they're just not that aesthetically pretty. And I know that's such a superficial thing to touch on and to have to think about, but you know, it matters to me. I like something that looks good. And I think this Sparrow 30 looks awesome. 
It's such a cool color. I mean, they're really going for that millennial pink trend, which I think is really cool. All right, Joe says, uh, anyone have a Fof Performance 5? Joe, I do not. Um, but yes, we've got, we're getting a couple comments. So yeah, if you have questions, feel free to answer them and maybe someone else, if, if I don't know the answer, I'm sure someone in here is bound, bound to know. So the Everstone, okay. Okay. And JB wants to know the Everstone Sparrow 30 is $3.99. I looked it up and, and I want to talk about some of the differences between the 30 and the 25. I've made a few videos on the 25. If you want to check them out, they are on the Sewing Report channel. And uh, yeah, so the Everstone Sparrow 25 is great. The 30 has more stitches. It's got like, I think the one I have has like over 200 stitches. The Everstone Sparrow 30 has 310 stitch designs, stitch patterns, including a 32 utility, 84 decorative, and two full alphabets, which for a $399 machine, I think is pretty impressive. The decorative stitches can be set up to a width of seven millimeters, and it also has a memory function, so it can remember your individual stitch combinations to be saved. And uh, some features that I'm also really excited about the 30 is they've added a thread cutter. The 25 did not have a thread cutter, although it does have a need. It does have a needle threader. So the Sparrow 30 is adding the thread cutter. This one also has adjustable presser foot pressure, which is something the 25 does not have. It's got a sewing speed control, which the 25 does have. And it's, you know, like the 25, it also has a start stop function and a needle stop up and down. And it also includes seven standard presser feet. And here's the big difference for me too, is, is it comes with an extension table. The 25 does not come with an extension table but I think you could buy it for like 50 or $75 extra. The 30 does. So the Sparrow 25, I think is 329 and the Sparrow 30 is 399, but you get a lot more stuff with the 30. Plus let's be honest, the blush pink color is kind of amazing. So if you're in the market for sort of a, an entry level machine that can do a lot and is within a fairly reasonable price, I really think this 30 looks pretty cool. All right, we got a couple more comments. Okay, does Brother have machines that are the same as the Sparrow? Linda, Brother does have, Brother has so many machines and we're gonna get to some of the new ones I saw on the website. But let me get another picture of the, the Sparrow. Okay, so this is another picture of the, this is the hand wheel. Doesn't that look awesome? It's like rose gold. I'm kind of in love with this machine. I don't need it. But for some unexplained reason, I'm just very drawn to the Everstone Sparrow 30. And it is linked below if you're interested in checking it out. Uh, you can get it from Amazon Prime, $3.99. And I think it's a really good price for the features you get. I've actually tried out the alphabet feature on the 25 and it was, it was solid. The stitching on it is solid. If I had one criticism for Everstone, it's this. Um, it's the buttonholes. The, um, I have a Janome 7700 and the Everstone Sparrow 25. The buttonhole stitching on the Janome is better, but keep in mind the Janome 7700 that I have was $2,500. So $2,500 versus a $300 machine. Um, you know, there's going to be a few things that may not be the same, but you have to figure out, is it worth the price difference to you? That is like my one, honestly, out of, all of the things on the machine that is my like one criticism and the fact that i only have one is pretty amazing i have oh and um you can also get a package i linked two links to the everstone sparrow 30. there's one package i saw where it comes with um the walking foot and the quilting accessories so that was one of the packages i think that was for an extra 30 dollars or something which i thought was a real still a good deal I think the the package, the extra feet I have, it came with like a walking foot, um, a stitch in the ditch foot. It came with a quarter inch foot with a guide on the side. And I think it came with one other foot. I forgot what it was, but that was like $35. So if you are looking for, if you, if you don't really need a huge throat space and you're looking for something affordable, but also that can do, has a lot of features. I think the Sparrow 30 looks like a really great deal to me. And if you love pink, you got to go for it. I have not seen, the only other machine I've seen that comes in pink are those Janome like models that are more meant for kids. You know what I'm talking about, like the ones that are like $75.
But the colors on the Junomi, they're a little more like juvenile, like they're very bright. I love the elegance and the color of the Sparrow 30. I think it's a gorgeous machine. And if you put it in your craft room, it would look amazing. I, I, I kind of want one just for that purpose, even though logically that makes zero sense. Okay, Vic says, how can we tell disposable machines from those higher quality ones? Vic, I would really, yeah, and Heidi says, you can see the burning influence, and that's totally true. Um, you know, and I would agree, I don't think all machines are made equally, but at the same time, I think that from what I've seen, I think most manufacturers have lower end and higher end models. So I think it really depends on I think you need to read a lot of reviews, try it out if you can, look at the machine in person if you're able to. But um, I've owned Brother Machines. The only brand I haven't really owned, I haven't owned, a, I don't own any modern Singer machines. I only have the a vintage machine. And I would also say I haven't really tried FOF. Um, actually, yes, I've, never, I've not really tried FOF except for a demo at a sewing machine convention. I have tried Husqvarna Viking during a workshop. I've tried Bernina's during workshops. And I've also tried Baby Locks. And the Baby Lock domestic machines, I will say, so I think Baby Lock and Brother are somehow connected. Baby Locks are a little more expensive. I will say the Baby Lock I used at a sewing machine uh, workshop felt really nice to sew on. It had awesome functions. It had very intuitive computerized functions. Like it had some features like if you put your took your foot off the presser foot, it would automatically like do like it would automatically like put the needle down and like raise the presser foot or something. So it had I will say the baby locks I've used have had some very cool features I have not seen elsewhere. Um, they are a little more expensive than the brothers. I think the brother brand is also a solid one. I had a four hundred dollar SC four hundred. It was a solid machine. It worked as performed and it was, I think it was $400 when I bought it, but I think the prices dropped and that was a sewing and embroidery combination. I wasn't, we weren't too impressed with the embroidery functions. And in fact, if I had to get an embroidery machine, I was telling someone I would just get a separate embroidery only machine rather than get the combo. Um, I don't like switching stuff out. Like I would never get a serger slash cover stitch machine combo because I would never use one of the functions. I like you. I for sewing machines, I actually have found over the years I like unitaskers. I like sewing machines that can do one thing and then I can switch from machine to machine. So um I am potentially in the future interested in embroidery and if I do that, I'm definitely going to get a machine that just does that does just embroidery versus trying to switch out the unit and everything. To me that's just kind of a hassle. Joe says I made the mistake buying my machine right away as it as it was released I know the color the color of this um the Everstone is just so gorgeous I do wish more makers would jump on that bandwagon and make machines that were just prettier like something that was more of a conversation piece in your home um rather than have like you know kind of strange colors you know again not everybody likes red not everybody likes you know like like some of the colors that these machines are um so I think Everson is making some very smart marketing decisions, marketing and manufacturing decisions in that. And again, this machine is a really good price. It's $3.99 and it comes with the table. It comes with the extension table. So I am I would be very curious to try it out. I have not tried it out, um, although I've heard a couple people who, who have. But I have obviously been using the Everson 25 for about a year. And I'm a fan. I like the machine. I think if you do some like light home decor projects, you know, maybe like some baby quilts and you do clothing. I think it's a good machine. I think it's a good machine for that. Um, especially if you're not doing like larger quilts. If you're mostly doing garment sewing, I think the Ever Sewn Sparrow line would be a good one for you. Especially if you like Bernina machines, but you don't necessarily have the budget for a like a Bernina machine. So I think it's a really smart idea that they've started a new brand that just has the same sort of quality and engineering, but it's it's more it's more of a price that someone just entering sewing can afford. I think that's awesome. All right, we've got okay, yeah, and uh, Joe, I'm curious as to why you felt it was a mistake when you got something just as it re was released. What was your experience? Let us know in the comments. 
All right, and we've got Linda. Maybe it is Juki that has the same machines as the Sparrow. You know, Linda, I'm not sure. And I, Juki is another brand that I don't have a ton of experience with. I've tried out some of their long arm machines at shows. I thought they were they were good. I've also had some experience um, long arming on the handy quilt, doing long arm classes on the handy quilter machines and on the gamel machines. And I thought all of them were were solid. We've got Barbara. September is National Sewing Month, so that is why the new machines are coming out. I bought a Viking two years ago. No upgrade anytime soon. Yeah, and Barbara, I think a lot of us are in your same situation. You know, a lot of us aren't looking for a new sewing machine every single year, maybe every 10 years. I don't know. Um, but I, the only thing I, I don't know, at this point, the only machine that I don't have that I might want would be like, would be like an embroidery machine maybe but again I don't absolutely need one obviously I can make do with what I have I already have like five sewing machines as it is so at a certain point I do feel like um if the sewing machine makers want more customers they need more people to sew rather than to try to get people who already sew to upgrade their machines because let's be honest not all of us have the money or desire to upgrade a machine or to get a new machine so let me know what you think of that too. Um, I do think uh, that, I, I do really think that if the sewing machine industry wants to grow or at least be future, be sustainable in the future, it's got to find new customers. It's got to find different customers that don't already sew. So let's look at some another machine. So, okay, this next one, I am, uh, I'm curious to know what you're going to say about this. So the next one is from Baby Lock. And, uh, hold on a second. All right. So the next one is from Baby Lock. Okay, this is the Baby Lock Triumph. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna... So this is the Baby Lock Triumph. This is a serger. And I do have a friend, um, Oso Angelina, and she works at a sewing machine um, dealer. And she is telling me that this Baby Lock Triumph is gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of seven thousand dollars i let me say that again seven thousand dollars i do have some of the stats for the triumph and it does look cool so the stats on the triumph it says it's got something called revolutionaire threading and i know baby lock already has cornered the market on the whole like jet threading air jet threading um, so you can thread the loopers with just the touch of a button and then thread the needles automatically with the touch of another button. So this is, I think, the first serger I've seen that promises to have, um, like, push-button threading. Like, not just your typical thread, like, you know, drop-down needle threader, but this will automatically thread the needles. Now, I mean, for $7,000, I would certainly hope so. It does seem to have the capacity for, like, seven spools of thread, this is a very, obviously a very, very high-end serger. So let's chat about that. Um, if you own a serger, what, how much would you spend on a serger? That's what I'm curious about. And I really wonder, like, what, like, what kind of customer is going out and dropping $7,000 on a serger? It's definitely not me. And I, you know, again, I don't know. I, I have heard, now I've gone to some sewing machines before, sewing machine shows before, and I remember having a conversation with a couple people and they were basically like, baby lock sergers are the best. Um, you can't go wrong with a baby lock serger and they are worth every penny. Now, I don't doubt that and I'm sure there are people out there that really swear by their baby lock sergers. Now, I have a $200 serger, the Brother 1034D, and I think it works just fine. It was $200. It's a little bit noisy and it does vibrate a little bit, but $200 versus $7,000, I don't know if I could get to $7,000 being that much different in the quality. Like, I again, even though I'm sure that, I'm, I have no doubt in my mind the Baby Lock Triumph is a better serger, I don't know if I can get to the place where I would see that much more value in paying seven thousand dollars i don't know maybe i'm crazy yeah we got a couple people um jess i was looking at financing this baby lock machine we got a couple bernina fans in the house too and uh i know yes the sandra says she really likes the everstone 30. uh yeah and 
and Stephanie says, what's with the seven spools that's throwing me? Okay, Kate says, my husband can buy a Triumph motorcycle for $7,000. Good point. And, and Jess says, it says this machine has tubes the thread goes through. And yes, I read that too, and I was like, that, that's interesting. Now let's run through some more of these stats. It's got the revolutionary threading, the automatic thread delivery system. Now these are all trademarked. Uh, pure lighting with six LED lights and a wide workspace of five inches to the right of the needle and three inches tall. It's got a full feature differential feed. It's got a knee lift on it and it has variable sewing speed control. I mean, this thing has so many, the features list for this serger and, uh, and you don't have to just take my word for it. I have linked to the website if you'd like to uh, see more about it. And if you do have a baby lock serger, Tell me, like, why, like, why do you think they cost that much more than other sergers? Um, I have, I have used a uh, baby lock ovation during, a, I took a surging class at a sewing convention, and we used baby lock ovations. Now, don't get me wrong, it was nice, and it was very pleasant to use, but um, at the time, I think the ovation retailed for $6,000, and they were having a show special, so, like, if you're not familiar, if you go to these sewing conventions or if you're going to sewing shows, um, a manufacturer or a dealer will like will basically sponsor classrooms at the convention. So like there'll be the baby lock classroom and then baby lock might give like 20 baby lock, you know, triumphs. So they'll use them for a couple days for the classes. And then after that, they'll offer them as show specials. So they're kind of like floor models or like, you know, obviously very gently used machines. And they'll offer them for a great deal. And from what I remember at the time, the Ovation special, now these were, they retailed for $6,000. And then if you got them at the show, they cost like $3,500. So they gave you like a, what, like a 40, 50, like a 40% discount, you know, on a gently used serger. So if you are looking to get the Baby Lock Triumph, maybe that's something you want to look into. Um, go to a show where you see that they're going to have the Baby Lock Triumphs and then get the show deal. And I have noted, and you can do, like that works on all different kinds of sewing machines. They, um, you know, they had Berninas, they, you know, like, any any time the sewing machine maker will sponsor that classroom, they will offer really great deals just for the show only because the uh, sewing machine dealer doesn't want to have to lug those machines back to the shop. So that's why they offer them for such a good price is because, you know, one, they're kind of gently used at that point. And the other thing is that, you know, then that saves them the work, the effort, the resources of having to take those machines back. So I don't know how you feel about this. I I think they look good. It looks cool. And it's got like a gazillion features. But um, my personal feeling, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy this. Um, even if it was a show deal for like $3,500 or $4,000, I just can't see myself spending more than a... Honestly, anything over $2,500, I, which was the most expensive machine I bought, I just can't really see myself doing but what do you guys think about this Baby Lock Triumph and all its gazillion features and $7,000 price tag? Do you think this is crazy or do you think this is like, you know, a gr like, do you think this is, it's worth it? Like, I just, I don't know. Um, I haven't, obviously haven't used it. That's why I'm using photos. Um, and, and that's one thing I will do if I talk about some machines that I don't own. Um, obviously, I, I, I'm not going to be able to have one, you know, a video about it because I, I don't own them. Um, I'd like to try them out and maybe in the future I may be able to maybe go to a sewing machine dealer and do a demo with them. Maybe if I have more time and I'm able to to put up more videos, but I I saw these machines and I was just like, this is this is interesting and I really want to talk about this $7,000 for a serger and I don't know, I honestly like don't know what to think. So, but I'm going to see what you guys think right now. All right, we got a couple more comments. Uh, all right, Stephanie, my brother's serger works just fine. Linda, it, it looks like it has eight cones of thread. Okay, so so one's like, Linda, I guess one is like hiding behind some stuff. And uh, Joe says, my brother's serger it was $200, good enough for me. All right, Barbara, you have a baby lock serger. It's 20 years old and it works just fine. Uh, Barbara, if you are willing to share this with us, 
what what model do you have of the baby lock serger? How much did you pay for it at the time? Was it new? Was it like a like a floor model? I let us know what your experience was, and also if you feel since you've had your serger for twenty years, how do you feel it is as a value over time, owning it over a long period of time? Like what what's the deal? Um, I I know there's people that are like real big baby lock diehards and I just kind of want to know more like why because I I'm having trouble I'm just personally having trouble kind of wrapping my head around some of the stuff all right um Vic says I wouldn't pay as much for a serger as I would for other machines how many options do you have for a serger all right we got Joss says I have a Janome 3434D but I totally want this one and it is so expensive all right Heidi says serger scare one scare me but I have one uh, Joanna, I hate my brother for $200. The quality of stitches are uneven. JB, personally, don't have a need for the Triumph, nor could I ever spend that much on a machine. Probably wouldn't spend more than $500 on a serger. I have the exact same serger as you. Works great for me. Sandra, I bought a Juki sewing machine July, and I have to say it works just wonderfully. Heidi, the price for the Triumph is off-putting. Heidi, I, I kind of feel the same way you do. I Again, I know that the sewing machine has different price points for everyone. I just want to know how many customers out there are seriously looking at paying $7,000 for a serger. If that is you, awesome. I am very like happy you're in a position to do that. Uh, but I don't know many people that are. Even people that are in the sewing business, I don't know how many folks are really in the market for that price of a serger. And we got Snow Bunny. They do that for sewing and quilt cruises. Also with the machines used on the ship, give a discount for them. Yeah, and Snow Bunny, I think that's something that if a lot of people may not know. If you are looking for a great deal on a sewing machine, go to a show, go to an event like that where they will use machines and provide machines, then sell them for a discount afterwards. I think that's a really great way of getting a better price on a sewing machine you want is to go to sewing machine conventions. Like QuiltCon, they were selling all kinds of sewing machines at a discount um, because they were using them for all the workshops. And then afterwards, they sell them for a great price. And I was kind of, um, I was a little bit upset because I had just gotten, I think I had just gotten my machine like, I don't know, I want to say like, a, like I now I own the Janome 7700. I paid $2,500 for it. It did come with a few years of like servicing, although I have not taken them up on it for year two or three because I'm lazy and it's really far away from my house. So whatever. But the next year I went to QuiltCon and they were having a show special. It was like the Janome 8900 and it was $1,700. So they were selling a better version of my sewing machine for like quite a bit less. And at the time I was like, man, why, why? And I was kind of, it was a little upsetting, even though I obviously that was my fault. And in hindsight, I do wish I had waited to purchase a better sewing machine until I knew more about what I was doing. Because I think I would have picked maybe a Janome. And, this, and when I bought my machine, it was right before the Skyline series came out. And I think the Janome Skyline series would have been a better fit for me than the 7700. And they cost less. But you know what? You can't go back in time. I've got the sewing machine. It is a nice, it's a great sewing machine. But I do think in hindsight, I, sh I should have done my research a little more thoroughly and waited. So I think I will say this. If you are thinking about upgrading mach your machine, wait a few more months. Um, you don't know what else is going to come out. And you want to make sure you're getting a really awesome price too, especially if you're going to spend over $500, $1,000 on it. Um, so I would wait, go to one of these shows, and also use these machines because, you know, you want to make sure that the, the machine you get is something that you have tried out different fabrics on and you've kind of seen it in person. I would say if you're going to spend over $500, make sure you you do know what the machine is like in person. So that's my recommendation. I'm... And I will say some of the machines I'm going to be talking about during this hour, I don't know the prices of because I couldn't find them. I tried Googling like, you know, how much they were and I was unable to find them. You had to go to a dealership to get them. 
So if you are more familiar with the situation and know what kind of prices some of these things are, let me know because I know that's one frustration that I think a lot of us have is the lack of transparency with pricing with the sewing machines. It's like buying a car, you know, and sometimes I think that kind of annoys people. Like it kind of annoys me. I just wish they would just list the price, you know, just list the price, let us decide. But when we have to go to the place only to learn the prices, I, to me, that's kind of annoying and doesn't make me want to shop there, I guess. I don't know. All right, we got a couple of people, um, too expensive, price tag way too high. Um, Tony says she's got the baby lock evolution because of the ease of threading and setup. I use the different settings a lot. When I had no auto threading, I did not use or change the machine. Paid about $1,500. Barbara has the Pro line, paid $400 new in box. That's actually a good price, although Barbara, uh, are you the one that bought it 20 years ago? So I guess with inflation, um, $400 would be more expensive 20 years ago than it is today. All right, Sierra, that Triumph better make me coffee real sewing. Oh, boy. Tony, I didn't need or buy the Ovation, so won't be buying the Triumph. All right, Vic, remember that people often buy not what they need, but what is high status. Some will pay whatever they can suffer just so that they can say they have one, as long as they can afford a minimum payment. I remember when I see the $60,000 to $70,000 vehicles driving around, people don't necessarily have tons of money. And Vic, that's a good point. Um, I think I read somewhere that like most of the luxury cars in America that are sold are financed. They're not bought outright. So you get a lot of people driving around in these luxury cars that don't even have the money to buy the car outright. They're just getting the payment. They're just doing the payments. And um, um, in full disclosure, that's not really how my husband and I roll. Uh, we like to, if we don't, if we don't have the money for something, we just tend not to, not to buy it. Um, so that's how we have been operating. And I think it works for us. I know it might not work for everyone. And I think everybody needs to live their own lives. And I know it's a very personal decision how you choose to spend your money and how you choose to run your household finances. It's obviously something that, you know, you don't want to be preached to about, you know, just because I do things one way doesn't mean you have to do it or should do it the same way. Um, and that's why I think the sewing machine purchase is such a personal thing. I don't think there's a right answer for everybody. I don't think that there's a certain amount everyone should or shouldn't spend on a sewing machine. I really think it's up to an individual to decide on their own what's right for their situation and then go with that. All right, got game online. Okay. All right, that looks like it's spam. I don't really want to build my own mafia empire, but game online, thank you for joining us. All right, we've got uh, Jess. I need a searcher so bad. Uh, Judy, I paid $50 and bought an older Singer Searcher, maybe from the 90s. My rationale was that I wouldn't feel too bad if I did ir irreparable harm to it. Turns out it really hasn't been used more than twice. Judy, that's an awesome deal, and I'm kind of jealous. Joe, if you had a business and used a serger exclusively, but for what I use it for, mainly hemming or decorative, no. We got South Florida Vegan. I own a Husqvarna Viking Serger and paid $3,500. All right, you are, you are a high roller there, South Florida Vegan, and a Husqvarna... Designer Diamond Royal pay, pay, uh, pays about runs about seven thousand dollars. If you use your machine every day, it is worth it. All right, Barbara. Yes. So Barbara, you got a baby lock serger twenty years ago for four hundred dollars, which I imagine twenty years ago that was still that was still kind of expensive. Kate, as for price, I tend a one week sewing prog program on an island in the U.S. Every year, some of the older ladies always show up with their newest and most expensive sewing machine purchases. And Vic says, don't feel too bad if you can't feel like you can't afford things. Not everybody can afford the things that they own. And that is such a true statement. All right. Well, anyways, let's uh, let me show you another. Let's let's talk about some new other sewing machines. And now this one, I apologize for the really hokey uh, photo. Um, I know it feels like it's like floating in space. Like I can almost like reach out and touch this thing. Ah, now this is one of the machines from the new brother and novice line now brother so brother i think has some sort of connection to baby lock and brother machines i've personally had good experiences with them i have used several different forms i have a brother serger obviously i, I like it and uh i have used some brother sewing machines some like more computerized versions at um a sewing class and i liked it i think i think brothers are a great value 
you get a lot for your money and i think the like some of the things you can do with the brother machines are really cool like they've got the brother scanning cut which is like i guess sort of like a cricket and by the way i think in a future episode we should also talk about that cricket maker thing that i just saw come out because that thing looks crazy it can cut paper so i think in a future episode i wish i could try one out i don't know it's 400 bucks i don't know if i want to buy one but it looks very interesting to me so if you have a cricket maker and I guess it can cut fabric really well, so I think that could be interesting. Um, I have an older Cricut expression from like 2009, and you know, it was, I got it off an infomercial because I'm a real big sucker for infomercials. Um, I have not used it nearly as much as I should to warrant the price, um, but, but the new one actually looks kind of interesting and I'm kind of curious about it. Anyways, back to the brother though. So brother has an Innovus line, and when I was at QuiltCon last year, I did get to see a really cool one in person. It does some amazing things. And they one thing I do think that's cool about the Brother lines is that they've got the iBroidery website where you can download all these designs. They license stuff from like Disney and Star Wars. So if you're really into embroidery, I think, and that's it. I'm actually kind of interested in the Brother embroidery machines. Like if I had to purchase one, I think I would actually go with that brand. I've read good reviews on them, and I do like their really huge library of designs. So, yes, so this, okay, we got a couple more comments. Barbara, that price makes the $200,000 combo serger cover stitch sound good. All right, Judy says she splurged on the Brother Scan and Cut, and Judy, let me know how you like it. Like, what do you use it for? I I don't have a ton of time right now, so that's why I, I feel like I don't need anything else. But maybe if I'm ever given the chance, maybe I would maybe I would do some more crafting. I don't know. But, uh, okay, and Tony says some baby lock and, I guess, brother machines are made in the same factory. All right, the Cricut Maker machine says it can cut sewing patterns out. Ooh, it is linked to simplicity. Now, Linda, I wonder, can it only cut, like, small sewing patterns? Or do you think it can cut, will be able to cut larger stuff? Because that actually would be kind of cool. All right, Sherry says I would not buy it unless I was a professional seamstress and could afford it. Barbara, that brother machine is sewing di showing Disney motifs, which makes it expensive. I looked at it and felt it was too expensive for me. And here's the thing. I was trying. So Brother has a bunch of new lines. And I've linked to the website below. They've got the Innovus uh, NS1750D. Now these names are all like very long and complicated. This is a, so a combination sewing and embroidery machine. They also have the Innovus NQ3600D. Which I believe is the machine that's on your screen right now. This is also a combination sewing and embroidery uh, machine with the Q series lineup. And Brother has so many machines, I get them I get them really confused. Like a lot of Brother has so much stuff out, like it's kind of crazy. This offers new state-of-the-art features such as automatic thread trimming system giving you the opportunity to cut every jump stitch for your convenience. The large workspace automatic height adjuster feature and pivot function all make it easy for sewing and quilting projects. Expand your design capabilities with the generous 223 built-in embroidery designs, including 35 designs featuring Disney characters. Obviously, uh, they, they, they've got the lockdown on Disney because they've got Minnie Mouse up there. They also have a new embroidery-only machine called the Innovus NQ1600E. Uh, this is, it says it's durable and affordable. I have not been able to find any prices for any of these, so I apologize. I have no clue how much these cost. Um, if I had to guess, I would say some of them look like they're three to four thousand dollars retail. So, like, um, especially this one, the one that's on your screen, that definitely looks like it's at least three grand to me. I don't, but again, I'm just guessing. I don't know. And um, you know, when you click on it, it's like you need to go to the website to, you know, go to a dealership to find out. I I'm not going to do that. Um, so. I guess I'll never know, or I'll have to wait. And I even tried looking at like sewing machine forums to see if I could find answers, but I was not able to find any. Um, otherwise, I was going to report back. All right, we've got uh, some comments from Joe. A more pricey machine buy from a dealer. I have a, a $100 Brother backup purchased from Hancock along with my pricier one. I think that's a good thing to go. So you have one in case something happens to your good one, like it's in the shop or something. And then you've got... The good one for most of the time. All right, we've got uh, Linda. I think the Cricut Maker would only make smaller sizes since the width of the machine is restricted. Yeah, Linda, that's what I was thinking too because I think it's only, you can only do things that are 12 inches wide. 
So unfortunately for dressmakers, that might not be that helpful because then, you know, you could only cut like, I don't know, like doll clothes or baby clothes or something. All right, Judy, since I want to be able to do my own designs, I thought this would give me unlimited options and don't have to buy everything cutting cam. All right, so she's got the brother scan and cut. This brother, and Tony says, this brother is the same as the BL Adventura, Adventura 2. I think people complained about the small screen. This does actually look like a cool machine. Um, and oh, and the other thing that I saw is that Brother has some new, um, and I've linked these below too. So Brother has some new cover stitch machines that look intriguing to me. Obviously, I've been using the, uh, the 1000 CPX that the fine folks at Pink Castle Fabrics have hooked me up with for a short period of time to make some videos with. It is nice. And, um, but the Brother machines actually look kind of interesting. So let me talk about the Brother cover stitch machines. So this one I think is like, I think I saw it as like $5.99 or $6.99. It's the Brother CV3440. Now this one, um, this one kind of looks more comparable to like, uh, the, the Janome, I guess. But it does look like it has, it has a slightly smaller bed on it. So this one, I think I saw on some website it was available for. I I, I think it was six. I think it was six ninety nine. So the the brother CV three four four zero was six ninety nine. So that's actually more expensive than the Genomi one thousand CPX. But they have another model called the brother CV three five five zero, and that is, okay. So this machine, I don't have a photo of it, but it is a uh, brother. It's a, it's a double-sided cover stitch. So it's more like an industrial cover stitch machine as to where instead of on one side it having a twin or triple stitch, it just has that cover stitch on both sides. And I saw a video on it. It actually looked kind of cool. I have no idea how much it costs. So obviously it's got to be more than the um, the lo like lower tier model. So it's got to be over $700. If I had to guess, I would guess $900. If I had to guess, I would say the double-sided cover stitch is probably at least $900 or above, um, which is a few hundred dollars more than the Janome uh, 1000 CPX. So again, these are not super cheap machines. And I know Brothers, uh, Brothers cover stitch machine is like, what, three? I think it's like $400 now. Although around the holidays, I noticed the price dropping to like $320. So if you wait until the holidays and you want to get the Brother lower end cover stitch machine, um, usually around the holidays you can get it for, you know, like maybe 50 bucks off. All right, we got a couple more comments. We got a uh, Jess Bla Disney is like trademarked or something. Yeah, so yeah, I think if you do, if you sell clothes you make on it, you don't get in trouble, but double check. All right, Claire, uh, Sierra wants to know if we talked about the Eversone Hero. Sierra, we did not. Um, although that is available on Amazon and I think it's five, I want to say it's $5.99. So it did, that does look like an interesting machine. I don't know how the embroidery is on it, but it does look cool. And that one is about, so that's $200 more than the Everson Sparrow 30. Um, but I guess Sierra, if I was going to get an embroidery machine, I would actually just get a separate, a totally separate embroidery machine. Um, I was kind of eyeing those brother ones up. I think it's like what the PE 770 or something like that. And they, they have great reviews. And again, I like the idea of going with brother because they do have the, the iBroidery library. So they have a lot of options for designs. And I think they look pretty cool. Got Barbara. Um, oh, and Vic, yes, we are all talking about American dollars. Uh, so this is US. I'm in the good old US of A. So um Jess, do sewing machines go on sale on Black Friday? Would that be a good time to buy? Jess, I did see on Amazon, I saw a lot of deals around Black Friday and during the holidays with the lightning deals. So you definitely want to keep an eye on that, especially because I've noticed, and I've noticed the prices of sewing machines have been fluctuating throughout the year. Like the Brother Cover Stitch Machine, I kind of almost wish I'd, I obviously have the Janome now, but... For a while, the price was had dropped from like three ninety four to like three twenty, and I was like, "Oh, now that it's three twenty, I'll have time to think about it." But then the the price jumped back up. So if you do keep your eye on a specific machine and you see the price drop, I would get it then. But around Black Friday, they do have a lot of lightning deals. The only thing is, you got to be real quick with it because they only have so many. They offer that price, so if you don't get it at that time. 
oh, excuse me, you're kind of SOL. So just make sure that if, and, and Amazon will advertise the upcoming lightning deals. So you can see like, hey, the sewing machine I want is going to be a lightning deal at 9 a.m. So just be ready by your computer or by the app and just be ready to hit, hit, hit add to cart. Um, all right. Vic says, is the Viking considered an embroidery machine or domestic? Vic, I know that Viking does have a lot of combination ones. I did use a Husqvarna Viking at a sewing workshop once. It was okay. I wouldn't say it was personally... I don't know. I, I personally just didn't feel like I was jiving with the machine. It could have been just me because I know a lot of people that swear by Husqvarna Viking. But I used a combination sewing and embroidery machine. And I just kind of found it to be finicky for me. And I had some issues with it. But again... It could just be me. So if you are interested in that, I would recommend trying it out for yourself and seeing what you think. Because as you've seen from even these comments, everybody likes something different. So there's really not one right answer or wrong answer. It's pretty much what, you, what is the best thing for you. All right. Oh, and there's another machine I do want to talk about as well. We've got a couple more. All right. So the next one, if you are in the market for a an industrial or high performance machine, but you also want features, there is a new machine coming out from Janome. And this is called the 6700P. And uh, I'm actually pretty jazzed about this. All right, let me just, uh, I don't know if I should cover up my face or whatever. But uh, let me put this up on the screen. Because I'm actually pretty excited about this one. And I saw Brenda from Pink Castle Fabrics talking about this and demoing the machine. And it looks pretty cool. I don't know what the price is going to be on this. Again, um, the, again, sometimes it's hard to find the prices because they don't put them on the websites and stuff. But this actually looks like a pretty cool looking machine. If you're into, I would say if you're into quilting, pretty hardcore, this might be a good one. So this is the Janome Memory Craft 6700P Professional Sewing Machine. It's the first domestic flatbed sewing machine with a one-step needle plate conversion. Uh, the Janome Memory Craft 6700P is the fastest domestic machine in its class. It sews up to 1,200 stitches per minute, and it's got 10 inches of flat, seamless work area um, once the large... Oh, of the... Okay, it's got a 10-inch work area, and you can also get a large extension table for it. So this would be a great machine. It's, and one complaint, you know, and again, one frustration people might have about the industrial machines like the Jukies or, you know, the Janome 1600 is that it doesn't have some of the features of a domestic. This one is a, a marriage of both, basically. It's a high performance, more um, industrial machine, but it's also got like a lot of computerized functions, which is something that some of the other machines that are high performance do not have. All right, Tony, don't, oh, and Tony says she missed the Everson 30 discussion. Don't worry, Tony, because you can watch the replay and catch it all over again. So don't worry. And Tony, if you collect sewing machines, that's totally okay. Um, Jess wants to know if you, if they would sew leather, that's a good question. I'm reading the stats now, and it does say, okay, so it has a very large work area. If you got the extension table, it's got... 200 built-in stitches, nine one-step buttonholes, two alphanumeric fonts, including nine millimeter lettering and numbers. So that's a little bit larger than some of the other machines I've seen. Uh, you can customize you can customize each stitch using buttonholes, plus save as a favorite stitch. Plus, this model has customization of the direct stitch a screen. You can you can put your favorite stitches on, I guess, the home page of it. And it also has the AccuFeed Flex Layered Fabric Feeding System. And I can speak from personal experience. I really do like the Janome's uh, walking foot capabilities. It's, it's been very good to me. And I do enjoy the AccuFeed feet. And it's got manual controlled foot pressure, which can be adjusted in, every, in very small or large increments to perfecting stitch with your perfect fabric, with your chosen fabric. So that's cool that you could change the... Uh, I really like machines where you can change the presser foot pressure because if you're sewing with a thick fabric versus a very thin fabric, that does make a difference. And Joss, I don't know if it sews leather. I do know Janome, this, it does say it's more of like a, an industrial machine, but I don't know how it would do on leather. 
Um, if you do have questions about it, um, I've linked to Pink Castle Fabrics below in the description box. And I would definitely recommend reaching out to Brenda or Jason at Pink Castle Fabrics. They would definitely have more answers for you. And I do know that they do recommend the HD 3000 for leather and thicker materials. And that's actually a very inexpensive machine. I think that one's like four or $500, I want to say. But I would definitely check with uh, Pink Castle Fabrics because I have seen them um, doing a lot of demonstrations and um, talking a lot about this machine. And that's how I found out about it. It looks cool. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of very different machines coming out in the market. And I'm, I'm excited. So on one hand, I'm excited to see some new stuff come out. Although on the other hand, I just kind of wonder like, you know, how many machines can, can the current crop of people sew and really buy? I don't, I don't know. But these manufacturers are coming out with new machines all the time. And sometimes it's a little hard to keep up. So let me know what you guys think of some of these machines that are coming out. Is there one of these that you would actually be interested in? And also, you know, like what would make you want to upgrade your machine? Or do you really want to just keep the one you have? Uh, obviously, there's no right or wrong answer. I'm just, I'm just curious. Linda says, I have the Baby Lock Evolution and love it. It has a looper threader and sews beautifully every time. Linda, I am glad you have a machine you like. And I, I have used the Baby Lock Sergers. I think they are very good. Um, I just know, though, that sometimes they're not in everybody's budget. And I have the $200 Brother Serger. It works. Um, it's not the smoothest sewing experience because, again, it does have a little... It does tend to shake a little bit and, um, you know, it, it is a little bit noisy, but... It was $200, so I'm pretty okay with that. Um, you may not be, but I do think next week, um, I want the show's topic to be talking more about money and sewing machines. So if you are interested in checking that out, be sure to subscribe to the Sewing Report channel and hit. make sure to hit that notification bell because that will tell you whenever I'm going live or upload a video so you don't miss anything. And, uh, okay, we got a couple more. Oh, we got Amber joining us. And Amber, if uh, Amber's a friend of mine and she actually... Um, has a small business. She sells uh, some baby items. It's called Milk and Sugar Baby. She has some really cool stuff. Be sure to check her out. And Amber says, I love ugly new machines, but in reality, I'm usually just doing a straight or zigzag stitch. Amber, aren't we all? Um, and I would like to start using some of my decorative stitches on the machines. I just, you just don't get around to it. So maybe someday, maybe someday I will. I don't know. We've got Tony. Cobra machines are for leather specifically. I think there's almost... An almost home version for about $1,200. That's actually a good price. Um, and I know the sale right I have is good on leather. I just, I personally haven't found it to be that user friendly for me. So I haven't used it. My husband's used it a couple times. He likes it. But I just, I don't know. There's something about it that I just can't, I'm not meshing with it. So I haven't really used it, which is kind of embarrassing. And I apologize. My desk has sh been shaking a little bit. We've got JB, uh, same, I sew garments from patterns and that, that is really all the stitches I need. And if you do sew a lot of garments, I would agree with that. I don't, if you're just sewing clothes and you're just doing it for fun as a hobby, um, I don't really personally see any reason why you need to drop thousands of dollars in a sewing machine. If I did have a recommendation though, I would get unitaskers, get a domestic machine, get a serger, get a cover stitch machine. Um, just for all the different functions you'll use them for. And I think those will serve you well. So we got Vic. I started with a basic machine. I'd love to upgrade as mine has its limits. I tried using a twin needle recently and I don't think it's possible. Vic, I also could not, I, the twin needle and I did not, we're not a good combination. I tried to do a twin needle hem on a t-shirt and the stitching just totally ripped out. So I don't know. But I couldn't, I couldn't get it to figure out. All right. And I, uh, Vic says, uh, Barbara says, Vic, be sure to use the zigzag throat plate. But yeah, I, when I tried to use the twin needle, I just got a lot of thread breakage and I just, and the hemming I did do just kind of immediately ripped out. So I don't know. That's why I've really enjoyed being able to use a cover stitch machine. But again, I know that may not be a reality for everyone right now, but you know, we can always dream, right? We can always dream. Amber says, I would like to get a serger because I think that would make a ton of projects to go faster. Amber, it definitely would. And Amber, if you are just looking for kind of a budget one, go for the Brother 1034D. It's, again, it's not like the most high, it's not a baby lock, but it's 200 bucks. And it has made my life a lot easier for sure. 
Amber, I've got a couple videos about brother serger tips, like on threading and just some things I picked up from using a serger. But Amber, I know you would definitely benefit from having a serger, especially with all the work you do. I know you, um, you know, and actually you can use the serger function. You could actually use it to finish some edges if you wanted to, if you like the look of it. You can also do rolled hems, which is something I haven't explored yet, but something that I want to explore with my own serger is the narrow rolled hem. And I do think having a serger would make things, it would definitely make a lot life a lot easier for you. And at a $200 price point, that Brother 1034D is, an, is a really excellent value. Um, I, I don't really find it to be that cumbersome to thread the machine. I know some people do. Uh, but once you get the threading down, it takes you less than five minutes to thread the whole thing. So once you learn how to do it, you, you, get, you get it. So I don't find it to be too... Uh, much of a hassle to change out the thread colors either. So I changed the thread colors out. Um, I also have been starting to use like a stretch, uh, stretch, sorry, I cannot talk today, a stretch thread or like a woolly nylon thread in your loopers. That will also help. And if you're doing a narrow rolled hem, it'll give you a nice filled in stitch rather than having a bunch of gaps in it. But for garment sewing especially, having a serger has really changed my life and made my garments a lot better. Got Joe, all of my Jomies have a speed control. A Vic, I'd, a, I'd be able to do a plain zigzag with a single needle. Can I, Barbara, can I use the same plate? Amber, I would like to get into cloth wipes and nursing pads and smaller items. And it would be so nice to be able to finish those edges with a serger. I will look up the brother. Amber, you definitely should. And there's tons of videos on YouTube for how to use the serger. And also there's a craftsy class I got about using a serger. And the woman used several different types of sergers. So, um... If you had a, like an entry level one, you could still follow along. And if you had a higher end model, you could still follow along. But there are so many resources on YouTube I found for the Brother 1034D. I think it's a, a good one. Um, I And I, from personal experience, I have had really no issues with my serger. Um, occasionally, I'll have to rethread it. Like something will go a little funky. But it's not anything that busts up your day. And the stitch quality on my brother has been good. I have not really had any complaints. Once you get the tension down, that's pretty much it. But again, there are so many videos for setting the tension. And um, the one thing is I would have the, um, I think it's um, the first the first style. I always set the tension a little bit higher just so that my stitches are a little bit tighter because that's the one, that stitch is the one that when you pull your fabric apart, that's what meets the fabric. So when I put my stitches a little bit tighter, I usually have it set at four and a half or five. It will, you'll make sure that your stitches don't really come apart as much. But I love, I love the Brother 1034D and I, I just, I've had it for about two years and I haven't had any major issues with it or any real headaches. It's been pretty, you know, it's really been pretty maintenance free. The only thing I do is I clean it out every once in a while. You'll get a bunch of gunk in it. So you just need to clean it out. But um, anyways, let me know what you guys think of all the, these new sewing machines and new lines coming out. Let me know what you think. Um, are you also planning to upgrade your machine or get a new machine anytime? But I do think next week... All right, Joanna says, I think I got a lemon on a brother surgery. I'm so sorry, Joanna. That sucks. And I do, I do think... I, I think you're right, though. I think sometimes... Maybe, I think with any brand, you may just get a bad one. Um, I don't know if you've tried to contact Brother, but if you haven't, you definitely should and try to see if maybe they'd be willing to work with you on replacing it or work with you on trying to get a different one. I think that's terrible. And uh, But yeah, so anyways, thank you guys so much for joining us on this live show. Next week, um, this sewing machine discussion seems to be a hot one. So I think next week we'll definitely be talking about how much you should spend on a sewing machine, you know, how to, how to figure out what's in your budget. And we can maybe share some stories about how we came to the conclusion about, you know, how much we were going to spend on a sewing machine. How did you come to that decision? And also, also we can talk about financing machines. Should you, or should you do it? Should you, or should you, should you, or shouldn't you finance a machine? So I will see you guys back here next Sunday, but thank you guys so much for joining me. This has been a great discussion. And I will see everybody next week where we will talk about some money. So anyways, I'm going to sign off. And um, yes, I'm looking forward to Game of Thrones. So I can't wait to see. I cannot wait to see what happens tonight. I I mean, I, I'm so nervous. Um, 
I will say the one thing I don't want, um, I do not want Torment Giant Spain cannot die. That guy cannot die in the show. He's becoming my favorite character. I think he's starting to eclipse Tyrion Lannister. Previously, Tyrion Lannister was probably my favorite character. But um, I would say at this point, um, I'm, I'm getting onto the Torment ship. I really am. Torment and Brienne forever. I kind of want to make a sewing project dedicated to the two of them. But I am uh, very much... I If anything happens to Torment Giant Spain, I may not be able to go on. So anyways, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, happy viewing tonight and also happy sewing today if that is in your plans. I'll catch everybody later.